Hi, this is Alfauzia Nihar from At Home Tuition. Welcome to our session today. The topic that we are going to discuss in our today's video is Empirical Probability. Empirical Probability describes the relative frequency of actual observations of an event in an experiment. Empirical Probability is also known as Experimental Probability. Experimental Probability also denotes the Empirical Probability only. That is the another name of that. Empirical Probability is mathematically described as frequency of event E by total frequency. Frequency we generally denote frequency by F and total number of frequency is denoted by small n. Okay, this can also be said as in simple English frequency of an event E is nothing but number of times desired event occurs. Total frequency is nothing but total number of trials or tested items. Hope you are clear with the definition. Okay, now the mathematical definition of empirical probability can be compared with the mathematical definition of theoretical probability. In case if you want more information about theoretical probability, you can refer our previous video. Okay, the mathematical definition of theoretic probability, theoretical probability uses possible events and outcomes. The mathematical definition of empirical probability uses actual number of events and trials. The frequency, this word is being used from an experiment or sampling. The theoretical probability does not vary because the outcomes are set by a situation. But in this case, empirical probability, the answer will vary depending on the results of the experiment or sampling. Do you understand the basic difference between the empirical probability and theoretical probability now? Okay, now I am going to give you the laws of probability that the empirical probability follows. Okay, here is the list. Hope you are familiar with the definition now. Now let's see the laws. Empirical probability follows the laws of probability. Probability is just a number that lies in between 0 and 1. Inclusive, it means it includes the number 0 and 1 also. Okay, then the sum of the probabilities for a sample space of a situation is 1. Am I right? Probability P of S is equal to 1. Hope you would be familiar with this law. The probability of the remaining events in a sample space. That is called the complement. So, complement would be 1 minus probability of that event. Hope you are clear with this law. Okay. The third law is probability of an event that must occur in is 1. If you add all the probabilities of the case, you would be getting 1. In case if it exceeds 1, you must have made some mistake in the calculation. Okay, it should not exceed 1, it should be equal to 1. And the probability of event that cannot occur is 0. Hope you are familiar with this property also. Okay, in situations where theoretical probability cannot be calculated, you can determine the answer using empirical probability experimentally. Okay, so wherever uh, there is a no situation, you can apply theoretical prob probability, you can easily apply empirical probability to determine the answer. And when it comes to accuracy, accuracy of empirical probability depends upon the number of trials. The law of large numbers says that more times an experiment is performed, the more accurately the probability can be used as a predictor. So less number of trials will give you less accurate answer. In case if you are repeating the trial for more numbers, your answer will be very closer to the accurate answer. Does this make sense to you? Okay. Now let us see the similarities between theoretical and empirical probability. The reason why I am giving both theoretical and empirical probability on the same time parallelly is you can understand both. Because theoretical probability is very basic and simple. If you want to learn the empirical probability, only way is to understand the difference between these two. You have to compare and find the similarities and differences. Okay. Now let's see the similarities first. In empirical probability and theoretical probability, the answer for both the cases can be written as fractions, decimals or percentages. Both theoretical and empirical probabilities compare the desired outcomes to total outcomes. I mean n of e over n of s. Both follows the laws of probability. So these are the similarities for both the probabilities. Okay, now let us see the differences in theoretical and empirical probabilities. The main important difference. Theoretical compares possible desired outcomes to the total possible outcomes. Whether 
uh, empirical compares the actual desired outcomes that occurs in an experiment to the total trial outcomes. Theoretical probability is determined mathematically and probabilities are always constant. Am I right? But in empirical probability, this can be determined experimentally. This one is mathematically and this one is experimentally. And the answer, the probability vary according to the experimental results. In case if you are doing less number of trials, the answer will be somewhat different. In case if you are increasing the number of trials, the answer would be different from the, it may vary. Because the accuracy increases if you increase the number of trials. So this is the main important difference between theoretical and empirical probability. Okay. And also you should know the law of large numbers and how does it pertain to empirical probability. Okay. The law of large numbers states that greater the number of trials, the more accurate the probability. This is called the law of large number. This means that empirical probability which is calculated experimentally will approach a theoretical or a true probability with a greater number of experimental tests. Hope you are clear with this point. Okay. Let us do some examples for the empirical probability. Here is an example. Spin a quarter on its edge. Note which side lands face up. Repeat the experiment for a total of 50 times. What is the probability the quarter will la land face up? Was the result different from the expectations? Okay. For this problem, answers will vary. H should have a large probability of occurrence. Because weight of the tail side heavier causing it to fall first. Am I right? Because effect that is the effect of the copper center. Okay, if you increase the number of trials, the answer will vary for sure. This is just an analysis problem, no calculation needed for this one. Here is an example, we can find the theoretical probability as well as empirical probability for this problem. Okay, please read the question, what is the theoretical probability of rolling an even number on a die? Explain how to find the empirical probability of rolling an even number on a die. Okay, find the empirical probability for 40 trials. Okay, all the information are given in this question you have to compare it to the theoretical probability. The theoretical probability is 50%. A die can be rolled and the number of times an even number is rolled is noted. The empirical probability can be determined by the ratio of the number of times an even number was rolled compared to the total number of rolls. Am I right? So this is the basic. Now let's apply the formula or the concept. Theoretical probability. We are supposed to find the even number rolled on a die. So totally there are six phases. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So out of these six, what are all the even numbers? 2, 4, 6. Am I right? So these are the three outcomes. So probability of even number rolled on a die would be 3 out of total six outputs. Am I right? Hope you are clear with this part. Theoretical probability for this problem. Okay, now let's concentrate on the empirical probability. Trial number of total number of trials is 40. So probability of even number rolled on a die that would be 22 over 40. You can also list out the numbers starting from 1 to 40 and uh, circle all the even numbers. Then you can easily find that there are 22 even numbers in that. So if you simplify this fraction, you'll be getting 11 over 20 or 0 0.55 or 55 percentage. Do you understand the difference between these two? The empirical probability is slightly higher than the theoretical probability. So with more trials, the empirical probability would come closer to the theoretical value. Does this make sense to you? Okay. We are doing calculation mathematically for this one and for this one we are doing experimentally. The answer is constant this vary according to the experimental results. I have a question. How could the approximation of the probability can be improved? Okay, I'll tell you the answer too. It could be improved by taking more trials. If more trials are done, the probability becomes a better predictor of the results. Does this make sense to you? Here is the last example for this video. A survey was taken of 6845 married couples both of which were 40 years of age. After 30 years, 5,125 of the men were still alive and 5,600 of the women were still alive. Part A, what is the probability that a 40-year-old married male will, li will live to be 70 years of age? So for this one, you have to find the differences. 
or you can just directly use the numbers okay what is the probability that a 40 year old married male will be living at the age of 70 okay so for this one take down information for this one so at the age of 40 they got married and after 30 years they would be 70 so 5125 divided by 6845 so if you divide I'm getting 0 0.75 or if you want 3 decimals 0 0.749 in percentage you can give the answer as 74.9 percentage for these types of problems it would be better to give your answer in percentage because they are just asking you on the whole okay what is the probability that a 40 year old married female will live to be 70 years of age so after 30 years the total number of women were still alive was 5600 and total number of married couples initially were 6845 so totally there would be 6845 male 6845 female am I right so that's the reason I'm taking total as 6845 for both so 5600 divided by 6845 that would be 81.8 percentage hope you're clear with part 2 now part 3 what outside variables might affect the accuracy of this probability since this is a real life example you can include the reasonings what will all uh, disturb the answer uh, the answer may vary actually each of the student will give their own answer for this one uh, initial health employment the diverse state all these are the factors that would affect the accuracy of the probability am I right in case if it is a real uh, information the numbers would change according to these reasons so that's it for this example hope you're clear about empirical probability now in case if you have any query regarding this kindly let me know see you in the next video have a great time